Welcome to the Super Facts Show on the Super Facts Network. Featuring St. Laz, who also hosts the popular web series Gem Pop and music journalist Mark Walter Ward. They have discussions about hip hop, culture, society, philosophy, and everything else. Now available on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts. What up, world? It's your boy Mark Walter Ward, the Super Facts Show, Super Facts Network. Recently, GetOnDown.com released a, a Houston rap book bundle, which included a, a, a screw tape, a screw vinyl, a tote bag, and some other stuff. But the Houston rap book goes extensively in, in the uh, you know Houston history, which Port Arthur music is a big part of. And then all of the, the musical releases that accompanied it was uh, released by Russell Big Time Washington. For those who ain't familiar, he the first person who signed UGK and with us tonight, who, who better? We got PA Zone, DA from the Black Monks, and Big Smoke and Mitch. How y'all doing tonight, gentlemen? What's going on, brother? What's up? What's up? Chilling, chilling. So before we get into anything, you know, Big Mitch, we got we got to tell the story about how you came up with the UGK name. Because <laughs> that's definitely a part of uh, Houston. We're going to talk about Houston rap history. Yeah. Uh, UGK name came from, first of all, the breakup of the first name that we had, which was Mission Impossible. And uh, that name, you know, we, we had a, a group called the DMI Posse, which was Dangerous Music Incorporated before I knew about Two Shorts Dangerous Music Incorporated. And uh, I came up with that name also. Mission Impossible was the first name that Chad and I had as a group because a cat that we were in a, another group with called the Hardy Boys told us when they were getting ready to go to uh, California that we couldn't do any music without them being around. So... Chad and I took that as a challenge. So they went to California and had fun. Me and Chad put together a 30, uh, 30 song cassette, 90 minute cassette, and showed them when they got back that we could do it. Now, when you start putting other people together in a conglomerate, that we had as the DMI posse, certain people get to thinking that they run the whole situation, which was DMD. So 25 lighters on my dresser. Right. History right there. That's my brother. I love him to death. But at the same time, he had other plans. He wanted to take my other brother, Lee Master. And uh, Wild Pitch and Profile had talked about the things that was going on with the music that Lee Master and D was putting out. So what he decided to do was say, well, look, me and Lee, we're going to go and try to get these car tracks for everybody. And uh, y'all, right now, y'all just sit and chill. So he made this decision over a weekend. My brother Chad was out in California at the time. He came back Sunday, and at Monday at school, I had to give him this, this news, and he was devastated. So what I had to do at the time, since this nigga breaking the group up, DMD, I had to say, well, look, we just going to do our own thing. We have already proved to our other homeboys that we can do it. We're just going to do our own thing. So we had our music already out and about in different places, especially in Louisiana and little parts of Texas because we sold our tapes to different individuals at our schools out of our lockers. So, so what ended up happening was 
I'm listening to our stuff here and there. And one day it came to me, Underground Kings. Because the thing about Port Arthur was there was no rap scene. The rap scene was created by a handful of cats that was trying to do it. Shout out Mr. Boomtown. Used to, used to be Mr. trying yeah, to rap. It, you know, boom, that's the uh, that's the cat that told me that we couldn't do what I said we could do. See, it's 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 it's, it's, it's something that you would call his name out. Yeah, he 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 was one of the cats that that was in the group that said, Hey, y'all can't do nothing without us. So we proved him wrong. You know, and that's still my brother. I ain't got no animosity toward him now. That's that, that's my brother. Oh now everybody know y'all got big love for yeah. each other. Yeah, but you know, he motivated me and he motivated Chad for us to keep going. So because of our songs being heard in different parks and different places, different parties, I say, well, that's not a major scene, it's an underground scene. And y'all was so, the kings of that shit. Right. And especially in Port Arthur. So I said, well, we the top group out here right now. So let's just say we the underground kings. So when I came up with it, I was at my mother's house that night. And I called Chad from my mom's pad. And I told him, I said, hey, man, the first thing I said was underground kings. I didn't say hello. I said, Underground Kings. And he was like, what? And I said, Underground Kings. We trying to find a new name. That should be our new name. And he was like, Mitch, that's it. And that's how the name was born. Man, that's super what's up. You know, for <laughs> those that don't know, Big Mitch is, 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 is a gentleman that's with uh, Pimp on this DVD. One, one part that y'all remember... Uh, pimp say something about you saving everything and then you start pulling out like uh, uh, this, this time period you're talking about you start pulling out like concert flyers from back then and uh, I guess what, what was like album covers you made I think it looked like 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 from cassettes or something I, well, I, know you, I know you had like everything oh well I am the archives you know that is that is one of my aliases you know I have music from DA back in the day that he don't know I have you know what I'm saying? I am the archives. So, you know, what I try to do is I try to preserve the things that we've done in the past as much as I possibly can. Because I know that life happens and a lot of times cats don't have the mindset to keep some of this stuff going and to preserve it. Because I was the one that said at some point in time, the things that we've done in the past is going to be worth something. You Nobody recognize that it was historical when, when, exactly. when, 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 when it was just in it at the time, but, but you were Absolutely. in it and and and, rec and a step back recognizing. God helped me to recognize that it would be not necessarily profitable, but just to preserve, preserve the, the legacy. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's profitable for the culture. Absolutely, man, because there's people out there that want to hear that. And they, 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 it's like, okay, well, damn, all we know is UGK, the start was the Southern Wave. And that's February of 92. So you think of that and you'd be like, okay, well, now nah, we've been doing music really since 86, 87. You know what I'm saying? So there's music that I have, man, that I have from back then. And I, don't get me wrong now, it's music that, that has been stolen from me and I, that has, you know, I've, I've gave Chad copies and copies of copies of everything that we've done in the past. And people would always steal the goddamn cassette tapes from his car or from his house. So I mean, that's, that, that, that's a validation in a way, but that is fucked up too. It's, it's, it's really fucked up because there are some things that will never see the light of day right. 
of people taking and stealing. But even in them taking and stealing, they didn't understand the significance of it. Right. So the music is lost forever. So when I started looking at that, back, even back then, I was like, man, I got to keep what I have. And I have to even tell Chad, no, nigga, you can't get a copy of this shit. Because if you get a copy, guess what? Somebody going to steal it. And then if you want to copy right then, and then I give you the goddamn master copy, and somebody steal that master copy, now all the songs is gone. Word. So when, when did y'all first start hearing about Big Time Records? Did you know about them before UGK signed to them? No. Nah. Uh, Russell was working in King's Flea Market. And uh, some kind of way, I believe, that Chad played, you know, uh, our demo for him. And he was trying to start a record label called Big Time Records. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, Point Blank was his first artist. And he liked all the shit also. Yep, that's it. That, yeah, that's it. In the that's plastic. Point, that's point blank. In the see now see that's worth that's worth something. Oh, that's worth something. I got an open one too. I got one I can listen to. And and see if he saw that, he he'd be so happy. He'd be like, man, somebody got my shit in plastic. You know, that's the kind of cat he is now. You know, but yeah. Uh, so they have Point Blank, they get UGK. Yeah, and then we started doing music with, with Russ. You know, we, you know, they signed, Chad and Bun signed. You know, I didn't sign because I have went to college in the fall of 91. Oh, you was, you, you was playing football too? Yeah, I was playing ball at Prairie View. And uh, Bun took my place. I asked Bun to take my place. And Chad asked Bun to take my place because he was the obvious cat in the city that was dope enough to do that. So, so, that so you, you come back from Prairie View and where, and where are they at musically? Like, like are, they, are, they, are they starting to get known in Houston at this point and all well, that? Well, the summer of 91... Chad Bunn and I was doing a song called Tell Me Something Good. We was jumping from, from uh, studio to studio trying to get the song done. And they was draining us for the money. The studios were. It, now, it, it was I, different back then. They don't understand. Oh, yeah. you, like, if you if you recorded it for an hour, how, long, how, how many hours did you have to spend for editing? Like, two, three? You had to pay for that dad tape shit, all that shit, right? All of that shit, man. If you could all find like a hundred dollars an hour, you was getting a bargain, and a song used to take like six, eight hours if you was prepared. And they was just sitting on their ass, manipulating the whole situation because everything was in their hands. We didn't know how to work none of that shit. So guess what? Chad sat there, watched them motherfuckers work that shit, and he learned how to work it. That's when he was like, you know, he would get there and be, be manipulating shit and sounds and the sound engineer and the, and, and the people that's over the studio get mad at him because now he didn't figure out how to do the shit in record time instead of them procrastinating. Right. So, you know so now they I'm ain't saying? getting as much money. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So they didn't like that. And they really they ain't like, like it, it when he started questioning how much money he was making off the music. No record well, sales see, to the whitey paper. Chad, Chad ne didn't necessarily question the money. It was Russell questioning how much that was being Oh, spent. I was talking about later on with Jive on that part. Oh, Jive. Oh, man. We, I don't even want to get into that. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole shit storm. <laughs> So before we get off, off Russell, you know, I, I, I know I know you remember this. Mm hmm what what you what you just showed me? Oh yeah. No, I, I I got the tape. Yeah. And I still got the CD in plastic. Yeah, the band. Yeah. I I got the band with UGK on it somewhere around here. I thought I had it re ready to go, but with the uh, blue cover and it's, it says "Band in the, Blue." I got the album right here. 
So, so DA, what, what do you remember about when, the, when these records start coming out in Port Arthur? You know what? I'll be, I'll be honest. I didn't know like the names of the artists or anything. I just knew it was jamming. I was like, man, this is cool. This is cool. But I've always been, I've always been the odd man out being in Port Arthur and being in Houston because I really, I, I grew up on East Coast shit. I grew up on Eric B and Rakim. I grew up on Divine Styler and Ice T. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when, when things start changing, you know, uh, you know, or start progressing, you know, Ice Cube and, and Public Enemy, you know, mm -hmm. fan of the Tribe Called Quest. So I was more a East Coast cat because I was I was more I was more attracted to 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 clever wordplay and, and and just that boom bap sound. Whereas, you know, being in the South, it was real laid back, real smooth. You know, it wasn't anything just like like like. So then, let, let, let me segue and ask you this real quick. Then, when, when, yeah. when when's the first time that you became aware of how dope of a lyricist Bun B was? With me, it was on oh. a Tila song. Oh man, <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you like this. Me and me and Bun, <laughs> but you know, but but Bun gave me a shout out on Drink Champs. You know, um, you know, he 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 was talking to Nori. And asked Nori, who, you know, it's like, you, you familiar with Black Monks? And Nori's like, Black Monks? What, are you crazy? Of course I knew who Black Monks is. <laughs> you know? but, uh, but me and Bun, we used to freestyle together at, uh, uh, we, we went to Thomas Jefferson High School. He was like, he was in this, in this, uh, in this he was in this uh, program called Summit. Because, mm -hmm. uh, but Bun is very smart. Bun is a very, very smart guy. Very intelligent. Half the time he went to Lincoln High, the other half he went to, to Thomas Jefferson. And me and him, like in his own words on uh, on Drink Champs, it's like, yeah, me and DA were body and niggas, you know? <laughs> so, no doubt. So, yeah, we, yeah, but Bun, Bun, honestly, with with, with UGK, lighter. Bun, oh, uh, I got lighter in the drawer right now. Okay. Um, it's that first drawer. I got you. Bun, Bun rhymed the way he rhymed at, you know, for the South. He rhymed the way he rhymed for the South because... This is what the South likes. The, the, you know, the, the South likes it straightforward, nothing complicated, nothing like that. But Bun could rhyme some. Bun could get on some Rock Kim shit if he wanted to. Bun could get on some, on some J Electronica shit if he wanted to. But you know, he chose the style that 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 he's rhyming. So I've always been a fan of, of, of Bun. I've always been a fan. He, he's 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 one of he's one of my. He's he's one of my my favorite lyricists. Even though we all went to school together, and I know this man, he's still he's he's still a bomb hard lyricist to me. Always will be. So so this screw tape that comes with this Houston package, you know, I know Russell Washington is selling them on 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 his big time records as time with a T a T Y. Um, I, I, I guess I, I guess he has the right to it. And before I get into when when y'all first start hearing screw, since you're talking about lyricists. One one of the artists that they got, or, or several times he appears on here, is K. Reno. Da per, per, personally, uh, were, were you a big fan of yeah. K. Reno since since you're in the lyricism so much? Because you know I, I lived in Houston for about five years on Westheimer, and uh, man, it's amazing how much respect the uh, K. Reno gets in the city of Houston for being yeah, like, like like you'll see Scarface in the Houston City paper talking about K. Reno, the best lyricist. Yeah, hold, hold that question right quick, man. And yes, I'm a big fan of K. Reno. Hold that, hold that question right quick. All right, while well, well, while they doing that, some of the artists that's on this album is uh, they got Big Pokey, Lil Kiki, okay. Big B, Lil Head, K. Reno, PSK, Thirteen, MC, um, SPM, Hillwood Hustler, Zero, Lil Flea, South Park, Mexican, all over this jump. But now, now that now that they back, what was you gonna say about K. Reno, DA? Reno, <laughs> that's my boy, man. Reno, Reno is Reno is highly underrated. Reno is a highly underrated MC in yeah, Houston, yeah. and and also being because number one, he's very lyrical. He has that, you know. He has, you know. Sometimes he does some braggadocious stuff, but then he's also very conscious, very very conscious. Very much. So you know, with, with, with that being said, he's very overlooked. You know, and in, in the South is like you know. Oh, She's gonna be bad to me. That's all. Um, right. un unfortunately, like in, in the South, it's like uh, 
conscious conscious rap is not really it is is it doesn't really make 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 a big a big. I mean, that, that, that's how you define it, though, my brother. Because I mean, Menace Clan was conscious as a motherfucker. Yeah, it's just it's just the way you. Present. Ghetto Boys was conscious as a motherfucker. Willie mm -hmm. D was conscious as a motherfucker. It's, 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 it's just the way you present it. So I agree with you. It's, it's just the way you present it. So, you know, with K Reno, I think it was a little bit over over folks' heads of the way he came. But I understood him 100%. I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm a K Reno fan for life. So, Got you. So, you know, let, let, let's take it back to Screw. When did y'all start becoming? Well, well shit. Did either y'all ever, ever meet Screw? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, he, I mean, the screw was just like 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 any any other ordinary guy around the hood. I mean, you know, he was it wasn't like he was unapproachable. You know, right. that's a lot. Of people, I mean, if everybody was lined up as house to buy his tapes or whenever they came out, he must have been approachable as a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Man, screw was the first cat. And the last cat that I know that made a million dollars off of gray screw tapes. Hmm. He had to put a fence up around his house because motherfuckers was coming to his house at all times of the day trying to get some goddamn gray screw tape. <laughs> yeah, you know, one thing I, I story I always liked about I, how, how much he loved West Coast music, you know. And I, oh. I, I, always, I always say I know it's cliche, but I feel that good, good musicians like good music. They don't give a fuck about genres. Where no, people live no, and hear that man. shit. You, good music is good music, just yeah. like you said. It doesn't matter what genre. It is. Hell yeah, yeah, I don't care if that shit's from India. If it's if it's banging, it's banging. If shit. it's good, it's good. <laughs> yeah. Period. Period. Which one was the UGK screw tape? Was it one eighty two? What the, the whole UGK screw? Tape? Yeah, there's one that's the all it's all UGK. I'm pretty sure it's either one eighty two or one eighty six. I, I know somebody uh, correct me in the comments, but find a link to that. That 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 shit go incredibly hard. My my, my personal know. favorite Screw song was uh when, when, when he screwed. I can't stand the rain. I, I, I that that shit's just ridiculous. Oh, you talking about Missy? Yeah, but, oh. but just what he did to that shit. The, like the that that's the only one that I can be sober, and that shit made me feel top, like I, top, I I done had some drink top, for real. Top, boom boom top top. Boom, top, top, boom, boom. Oh, yeah, I, I remember. Oh, yeah. I remember how he chopped that motherfucker up. Yeah, yeah he, he put his foot in that one. Yeah, he, it, that was a bitch. So, but when did y'all start hearing? Do y'all remember the first time you heard something screwed up? Yeah. I didn't like it. <laughs> Me neither. I didn't. <laughs> when I first heard it, I thought, like, okay, is the batteries going down on the fucking radio? What the fuck? Because all I heard was. Or, because mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah, because of war man, where yeah, people they don't know, know that, that struggle. Was going down, your shit was slowed down. Yeah, you have to enter this this radio only at that point. Yeah, so it had to grow on me, but eventually, I was like, especially when when I heard Tupac screw and chop, I was like, oh my god, this, you know, I'm just sitting there jamming and it's me against the world, dude. <laughs> I'm like that shit's jamming itself. Well, so my the the way that I came to to like it was Bun, I told him I didn't like it, you know? And then what Bun did, he showed me and told me and explained to me what Screw was doing. Right. Okay? So when he did that, Bun put a tape in for me. I don't, I don't exactly remember which one it was. But he put it in, and what he did was he walked me through the tape and what Screw was doing. When he did that, from side A to side B, when he did that for me, that was it. Word. I was a Screw fan. You know, I, I, I ain't good friend. It took me a minute to, to get get on it too. Yeah, I mean, you know, but when you get it, you get it. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter when you get it, as long as you get it. You know what I mean? So you know, I, I know a lot of you know y'all you, speaking about like K Reno being underrated. Somebody I feel is super underrated is ESG. Very underrated. Period. 
Yeah, so but do y'all remember when y'all first started hearing ESG or working with ESG or any ESG stories? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's know. somebody I definitely feel deserves more flowers in this world for his contributions. You know, swinging and banging is, you know. What's the one John Ocean to drink? Yeah. Yeah, and that's a certified the classic coming, coming to me. Out the ocean with the niggas in the, in the car. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, shit. I mean, especially at that time, you know how much that shit cost to, to do? Because that's new technology at that Stacks. time. Yeah, you 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 talking paper, and you know it wasn't no legal paper. Yeah. You know, that real, I mean, real G shit. You know what I'm saying? What Wasn't no niggas working no nine to five paying for that. Oh, yeah. I mean, m most Texas rappers basically rapped about their life. That, 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 that's why Devin was, you know, rapping what Devin knew, you know. Man, DA Devin, was rapping what DA knew. You know, like DA, people wasn't fronting in Texas and it was cool to be yourself. That, yeah. That's the whole thing. And Like for real though, y'all had the first rapper that didn't have to be no gangster. Devin. Like Devin was like the first person really to me that just really made it cool to be yourself. Like it's almost like they, they give Andre 3000 that credit. But I'm like, Devin was kind of doing that without the clothes before that. Man, Devin has not faked anything. Ever. You know what I'm saying? His, he is, look, he, and, and I hate to compare people, but you're going to understand what I'm saying when I say this. He is just consistent as Maze and Frankie Beverly. That's how consistent he is. Because all of his albums you can go back and listen to and they all sound almost the same. Because he's, he kept a consistent sound. Yeah, he never broke the formula. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And you got at least 20 albums worth listening to. I mean, you can every album is jamming. Yeah. You cannot go back and say that, okay, I listen. If you're a Devin fan, you're going to listen to his album and at least 85% of that album is going to be jamming. Man, he might have the best verse Devin, on the chronic for real. He's going to experiment. He's going to experiment because that's what he do. I mean, he's a real artist. Yeah. So he's going to experiment and do what he do. He's going to put some shit out there that's going to make you think of uh, he gonna put some shit out there beat wise that he rapping to that probably only he would be. And he would rap to it and make it fly because he's dead. He ain't Word. never changed. That's that's what artists is supposed to be about. You know, it's okay to go and experiment about some shit. You know, that's cool. But you give the people what they want. You gotta give them what they want, but you got to give them what they need more than anything. Yeah, no doubt. That's the point. And, and I, now speaking of history, you know, one of the biggest contributors, you know, like while, while we're sticking with the Overlook thing, can y'all speak on Mr. 3-2 for, for, for a little bit? T.A. Yeah. You know, spe speaking of, of great music. 3-2. Three, 3-2 three, <laughs> three, was, I'm going to tell you about 3-2. <laughs> <laughs> little known fact. Um and um, this ain't a diss or nothing. It's, it's just facts from, from, from what I've been told through the years. 3-2 used to live with Snoop at one time. When Snoop came out with the whole, you know, oh, for shizzle, my nizzle, and all this other stuff, 3-2 used to talk. 3-2 would say things that make you, it was real catchy, so you end up talking like 3. So really everything you heard that Snoop was saying Oh, for shizzle, my nizzle, and that zizzle, dizzle, dizzle, all that, all that came from three two, because he lived with him for a while. Three two just had this swagger about him, with you know, lyrically and even stuff he said. It was either just just funny off the chain, or it was just clever, like eh, yeah, you know. And if, if he wasn't doing that, he was smoking. He loved his weed. Loved his what weed. was the, what was the one jump? The governor with the blue cover. The governor. <laughs> Yeah, that's my man. Man, that's my shit. I can't remember who from UGK was on there, but I remember it was a standout verse. Nigga, <laughs> he was also known as as Patch Domino and Buddha Baby, the Wicked Buddha Baby. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, or, I think I got. That. I'm pretty sure I got that one too. I know I got like three, three Mister Three Two joints. Well, yeah. one, one of them was like like, like a mixtape. He must have pressed. I, I got lucky finding that shit when I was living in Houston in the Salvation the Army. No bullshit. The album with uh, you want to ride? We can ride all damn night to the wheel rolls off. People love South Side. That that album, I forget the name of it. I think it's the Wicked Buddha Baby. Something like that. I don't, like I don't that. know. I, I, I don't know like that. White, I probably listen to them all like three times. It's the white cover with, with the gold and uh and some gold green shit. And, brown and and he on it. it yeah. It's, it's a I know the background is white. And the, the writing and everything on it is gold and uh black. Something like that. I know one of my Mr. Three Two CDs is green. I remember that specifically. I mean, all all, the, all these people we talking about, they worth looking up and checking out, just like the Black Monks is. Like, like, okay. the, like. Hey, hey, man. Houston Port R for thirty, forty years of, of great rap music. This kid right here, DA. Oh, look! All he gotta do is get to one spot. You know. ATL. He been in Houston. He been grinding in Houston for years and nobody knew. But when I when I step in ATL, they welcome me with open arms every time. Open arms, man. And because they 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 love what I do. Down here it's kind of like you know, like I said, I'm odd man out. So it's like okay, yeah, you DA, whatever. But uh, you know, but most of the time, you know, it's just like in but in the Bible they say, you know, a, a prophet isn't appreciated in, in his own house. Hmm. So when right. you go to another place. You know, it's just just like Beyonce. I, I, when Beyonce was coming up, coming up, Destiny's Child, I, I went to some of this girl's uh, performances, and they would boo the shit out of her. She left, came back, now she got a fucking religion. <laughs> so the motherfucker made a religion out of her, and they can't even afford to pay her here to 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 do a uh, to do a show. And it's terrible. It's terrible, but you know, it, it is what it is. But what can what can you tell us about Bushwick Bill? Oh man, Bill. Bill was the brainchild behind us, behind Black Monks. He he he, he was the originator. I think I said that earlier. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Bill it was, was off. It was off. It wasn't on wax. How how'd you meet Bill, or how Bill become familiar with your music? Really? Uh, well, Bill, like I said, Bill, Bill Bill made up the name and he put me three two and a wall together. Actually, uh, he kind of he kind of inadvertently did stuff. Whereas, you know, we, we were, we were kind of, we, we, we worked with, 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 uh, with a, a producer at the time named Vito and, um, and, you know, so, so, you know, some of the other artists that, that supported us, but, you know, we, we, we came up with this whole concept, you know, based on what, based on what, what, what came out of Bill's mind <laughs> and it did the, the rest is history. That's about all I can say about that but I, I know I know Bill was the one that did it it, it was like a, it was an ongoing rumor that Bill did it Bill did it. But, but after talking with Bill and I have a whole other story I'll tell one day uh, I got kidnapped by Bill I stayed with Bill for like five days <laughs> so we, we <laughs> talked for five days He's like yo yay I remember I, I say this real, real short D -A, D -A, I was trying to leave I was at Bill House trapped I was trying to leave and uh, you know, I was trying to sneak out. I was like, man, I gotta get back home. God, you know, and Bill was like, yo, yay, where are you going? I'm like, Bill, I gotta get yeah. back home, bro. He's like, no, go in the closet. I got some shoes and some 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 clothes I got on tour. Go on, go in there, you sidewinder. Go and get it. And sure enough, I go in the fucking closet. Back then, you know, your bowls was hot, and Deodora and all it, all my size. I'm like, this nigga got a whole mall in his gut. God damn. <laughs> but say all that we you know i got really close with bill and we talked and he let me know a whole lot of things and i was like wow you know i just i wish she was alive today to still school us on, on on a lot of things and but yeah that, that dude yeah he, you, you know everyone i've ever asked i spoke to him asked asked about him who spoke to him talked about how much wisdom he had um you know yeah. anybody listen to this look up look up dirty glove bastard the spice one cuba Salini interview spice had a, had a wonderful uh bushwick bill story but you know since since we was talking about the history of of houston rap and everything i wanted to show y'all some things and uh get your opinion on it or in your case miss probably some behind the scenes stories 
For, first off, do you know what this is? UGK, September 15th, Dallas, Texas. Black Forest Theater, Dallas, Texas. What year was that? It was the last concert Pimp C ever did. Hmm. With Bun? Yeah. According to uh, um, uh, Ju uh, Sweet James Jones, the Julia Beverly book. What year is that? I, I guess whatever year he got out. You know, I, I I I took it from the book and looked up the picture, and then uh, had the picture printed. This isn't an actual uh, copy of the poster. Oh, that's that's, but that's cool, man. I like the way that looked. Yeah, I mean, you can find it online. In, in, in her books, they said that this was the last concert, and uh, the, the the image is online, big enough to get like reprinted on free prints or any of that shit. You know, pretty you big know. without it looking pixelated. And I was wondering yeah. if, if if you were there, if you knew about that concert. Because the story oh. was that the show went so good that, that he was like real elated and, and he was motivated to uh, make a bunch of music. You know, part of why he was in California was was making that Underground Mafia tape with 3-6. Man, I don't know a lot about the moves Chad was making, you know, toward the end. Uh, I used to do shows with them back in the early 90s, mid 90s, you know, especially around the Chitlin circuit, you know, but uh, I can't sit here and tell you exactly the last show I seen, you know, Chad at because especially before 2000, you know, they, they were moving around real slick. So, so, so when, when he came home and you reconnected with him on that DVD and everything, it was just more on some family shit. Of course. You know, uh, he was more like, hey, man, uh, I'm going to come holler at you a few times, you know, with some cameras. You know, uh, I want to start telling, you know, the story of, of, of how this shit started. You know, and he told me that he was going to do that. And he was true to his word. You know, uh, he's, he started pointing people my way so that I could tell the story of how everything went because, you know, he knew the story because he lived it, but he didn't necessarily remember it like I did. Right. You know, he had them so you have receipts. So, right. You know what I mean? And the receipts that he had, he always made sure that I got my hands on. And it's not no front and shit. I you know, I ain't on I ain't on no front and shit like, you know, you know, Mitch is that nigga. Nah, it, it ain't like that. You know, it's it's about preserving history. You yeah, know, definitely. as if as if museum type shit. Well, like, yeah, like how Illmatic got added to the Library of Congress. Like, you know, some of these yeah. albums I'm about to show you definitely need to get added to the Library of Congress. Absolutely. Like, like the UGK legacy, I mean, country rap tunes in general is, is something that the, the, the history of it needs to be preserved. Just like and, jazz music or anything that's important and foundational. And it's going to be there. It's oh, yeah, people ain't, there. people ain't letting it die. Well, of course not, because it it helped keep some people alive. Yeah, I mean, it you know, we, we were talking about new artists even on this or the last episode, but there, there's definitely new artists who consider themselves, you know, people who make country rap tunes. Right. That's what I I've mean, been talking about. I mean, I, I, I've always felt that Kanye West music to me sounds like he, he was influenced by Pimp's production more than anyone else. Kanye West? Man, I feel like my dark twisted fantasy, if you just listen to the instrumentals, that sounds a lot like the Sweet James or uh, live from the Harris County Jail. Hmm. As for what what what's the name of the album you're talking about? Uh my twisted dark fantasy, the one that had monster and stuff on it. Oh and yeah. I, sw I, I swear if you listen to um Live from the Harris County Jail, the one that's hard to find, uh, I, I see a lot of similarities. Like I I, I definitely feel Kanye West heard it. I don't know what level it has to meet to say that he, he did it or nothing. I ain't saying all that. 
No. But I'm, I'm saying he, he's definitely appreciative of him. He didn't bite it. He know good music when he hear it. Yeah, for sure. You, you, I mean. Yeah, I ain't trying to cast no aspersions. Like, I mean, in a good way, shit, just knowing about that speaks well of him. Yeah, when he went up there and said what he said about us, you know what I mean? That That's confirmation because everybody know that he's, he's he is who he is. And he's very important to the culture, even though we disagree with some of the things he do. But the man is who he is. And he's not a dumb dude. You got to realize what Clark, this cat was, was um, cut from. As far as his, you know, his intelligence, his mom and everything, and, and everything his mom instilled in it. So, yeah, he, he, he got his shit together. But at, at the same time, this is the industry. You don't get away unscathed. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Well, speaking of the industry, let me, let, well, th this one is and that was a classic to me, but I, I, I was just curious. Uh, you know, this is Scarface's picture disc. <laughs> deep, deeply yeah. rooted. I suggest anybody go out and buy it. You should always yeah. support Brother Mob. But uh, yeah, oh man, oh, that shit's hard as fuck. But just Scarface in general. Um, do you have any stories of, of, of meeting them, making music with them? I mean, you was on rap a lot. I'm sure you met him. Just get, just <laughs> tell, t tell me your overview of Scarface, I and mean, please, uh, any stories uh, you're welcome. You know what? Before I ever became part of the group, I was uh, here in Port Arthur. I was <clears throat> I was still in, in school, going to Thomas Jefferson High School. I was 17. And uh, true story, uh, a friend of mine asked me to skip school uh, on, a, on, a, on a Friday, and I said, oh, guess what? I mean, I went to his house. He said, man, uh, uh, I got DJ Action at the house and and, uh, and, and, and two Jamaicans. I'm like, so what that got to do with me? You know, I'm like, what the heck? So I went there, and it's, it, it was face. It yeah, Action used to be like, Scarface, for those who don't know. Yeah, yeah, DJ Action was, you know, Scarface with DJ Action back then. Y'all can listen to Lil Troy on Spotify if you want to hear that. Yeah. So, so you know, they brought me in there, and that, that was my first time meeting him. I mean, I was a fan, but it was my first time actually meeting him. And, uh, and you know, my buddy was like, yo, yo, they, 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 they're looking for some rappers, man. I, mean, I, I told him about you, DA. I'm like, oh, okay. So, uh, Bushwick walks in. And this my first time meeting Bushwick also. He's like, so you're the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's like, yo, he says, say, say something for say, say something for face. They were calling him face already. Say something for face. So I spit something, and face was standing there, and it's his his face kind of cracked. I thought I did something wrong. He walked to the back of the room, and then um, Bill looked at Vito. Vito looked at Bill. They both started like chuckling and laughing and smiling. I'm like, oh shit, what I do? What I do? And Bill was like, nothing. You were perfect. <laughs> and they both the living room and come to find out face was really impressed by whatever I did he was just like damn you know I found out he couldn't really say nothing against the, what I said what I said and no disrespect or nothing like that you know but you know we, we hung out for a while and um and they, they went back to wherever they came from like I said I was 17 I was just meeting these guys I really, what, I really, what, 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 what you do brother did you freestyle or did you have a verse memorized that, 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 that you have saved for such occasions I just freestyle I just freestyle I don't even remember what the hell I said I, I freestyle for them but uh but but what I'm saying before they left uh I said uh and keep in mind I'm 17 years old I was right. like say oh y'all y'all want to come to our school dance tonight you know? Oh, yeah. So oh, I invited them to the school dance. It, it was a place It was a place called Sacred Heart Hall. We uh, And that's and, and coincidentally, that's oh, where DJ God. DMD used to DJ all the time at Sacred Heart Hall. That was our, that was the, the city's, like, the, 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 that was the happening spot to, to go to for all the high schools. That's right. So I, you know, I, I invited Face and Beto and, uh, and Bill you know, and I walked in like I'm big shit because I got face. He, he hanging on my arm, 
and uh, and and Bill and Vito, they all walking with me. And they're like, "Oh, hold up, wait a minute, how, how, man, how you know the Ghetto Boys? You know the Ghetto Boys?" Da, 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 da. And, you know, and faces hanging on me like, "Yeah, yeah, you know, this is my boy, Big Six." Back then, I was called Big Six. I used to always end up with the Big Six Domino when I played Domino. <laughs> that was my name back then, Big Six. He's like, yeah, I got my boy Big Six with me. Yeah, we we walked through the through the crowd and whatnot. We had a nice time. And then after that, I'm sure they they, they left, went back to Houston, lost track with them for seven years. All of a sudden, uh, well, no, no, it wasn't seven. I'm sorry, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, yeah, about five years, lost track with them. I came back to Houston one day. I happened to go into a stop and go of uh, 7 Eleven. I come outside, I look to my right, and I see Vito. And he was like, hey, ain't you the guy I met in my minute, but I thought, hey, you Vito. Hey, what's up, man? Da, 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 da. <laughs> you know, I, I got a group I want wow. you to be in. It's called, uh, it's called uh, uh, at first, he said, I got a group I want you to be in. It's, uh, it's called the Convicts. So I, I at first, I was going to be part of the Convicts. Wow. It was going to be me, that been dope. Two, it was going to be me, Big three, Mike. two, and Big Mike. Yeah. But then they, they changed their mind and said, no, 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 no. I got a better group. I got a better group. You know, I didn't know really. This this was this was Bill's decision, not the other guy. But he's like, I'm going to put you with this group. Uh, we're going to call you all the Black Monks. It's you and this guy from Beaumont named, uh, named AWOL and three, two. You know, three, two was always like, you know, just smoking, whatever. <laughs> you know? And AWOL, you know, he was, you know, he was excited to meet me and I was excited to meet them. And the rest is history. We got together and we did what we did. And and AWOL from Beaumont. AWOL, yeah, AWOL from Beaumont. Got you. All right. So so here's some you might you might know know a little bit more about in detail. We got the uh UGK. Let me see a single from Dirty Money. <laughs> 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 this one just got the clean version and, and the dirty version. Do you, man, do you remember when that song came out or them making it or anything like that? Oh, man, come on. Let me see it. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't there when they made it, but Chad always made it a point to holler at me when they did some new shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? He like, Mitch, this, you know, this shit jamming. You know, I'm going to play you some shit, you know. So that that's what I would do. You know, I sit there, let him play what he going to play. And I'd be like, yeah, that that's all right, you know. But he know when I get to talking and talking about the song that he playing, to me, he know that that's a that's a winner. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, we what 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 he and I did was effortless, man. You know, we didn't have to try to do what we did. And when Bun came along, once he figured out what he was supposed to do and what he did, you know what I mean? That group is like yin and yang. The Yin yeah. Yang twins, not not comparing them to the Yin Yang twins. I'm saying that is Yin and Yang, and right. the shit was perfect. Right, like on some Tetris block shit. Yeah, and and they didn't figure it out until later. You yeah. understand? Me? Oh yeah, you can definitely see the evolution. Yeah, so I mean, you know, they they understood what each other was and how they were. And they respected that. That's why UGK always worked. Gotcha. This is this is what God put together. It wasn't it wasn't us. We just happened to be in the right place at the right time because God put us there. Man, Period. I'm glad he did. Yeah, I, I'm I'm blessed he did. Yes, sir. <laughs> we all are. All right, the next one, th this this must have came out when they was in the holding pattern after Big Pimpin', because it just says them Texas boys are back. And it's hard, I know it's hard to see. And it got belts to match, which I which was on the oh, uh, yeah. side, side hustles, which I, is one of my favorite UGK songs ever.
But yeah. then the other joint it got it got the game, which is Mill featuring UGK. Do you remember that? The dude from Philly. It, it, it don't it don't got UGK on a murder mill, it just got Bun B. What did it say? It say the game, Mill featuring UGK. But like I, I also got this. I also got this and it just says uh Mill featuring Bun B. Like pimp, pimp ain't on it. And I was just and always what, curious how that song. What the came other out. song say? The other song say Belts to Match featuring Smitty and, so and I, Sonji. I see, nigga, I, Smitty, I know that one, but what the other one say? The Game, Mill featuring UGK. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a jamming song. Do you, do, do you, like, how, was that like some record label shit? Like, how they end up on a, on a record with a, a dude from Philly? I have no idea. And I will never, you know, I, I, I don't know about that. You know, like I say, you know, they made a lot of moves, man. I wasn't always there when they made them move. Right, right. But, you know, it was always offside chance. All right, so the next, one, the next one we got uh, Pimp C solo pouring up when he, when he came home, you know, featuring Mike Jones and Bun B. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, that video, yeah. you know, I was working at the Texas Youth Commission at the time. And, uh, you know, Chad called me. He was like, hey, man, I don't be such, 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 such place at such, such time. And I said, yeah. I said, okay, well, look, I'm at work, but what time you need me to be there? And he told me. I said, okay, well, shit, that's just a crime by the time I get off work. So I'll be there. So... I got there, and and what what you see is what you get. So you in that video? Yeah, pulling up. Shit, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up, brother. Yeah, with a Stephen Jackson, Indiana Pacers jersey on. Okay. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was actually doing time when that video came out, so I, I didn't see it till later. I probably only seen it like once or twice. You was, you I, was I, locked I, up, I, you say? Oh yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it is. But I'll be all right. I'm tough, I'll right? I bet you're a better person because of it, though. Yeah, most definitely. Most right definitely. On. All right, so then next, you know, Dirty Money. Oh, yeah. Dirty Money. Yeah, yeah. DA, yeah. you remember the first time you heard Dirty Money in its entirety? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I I could comment on every last one of the, one of UGK songs, but I, I love them all. It's like it's like I could just sit there and play all of it and just like like I like I'm just hearing it for the first time. See, so, off top, I got favorite songs like on Dirty Money. My favorite songs definitely ain't that a bitch with Devin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except for some reason, that shit was was always censored, even on even on that Dirty Jones. It took me a long like this record is not. I remember the CD I bought everything curse words except uh ain't that a bitch was edited. I, I that's record company shit. Yeah, that's a, that's some record company shit. All right, this next thing, this company. Oh, go ahead. I say I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah. So so th this next thing is something that comes with with the uh Houston rap bundle. I, I it's called a lithograph. You know, to me, it's just a picture. And, and and I was wondering if if you know about this, if you've ever seen this before. Nah, I've seen that. That 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 don't look like a real picture. Yeah, nah, it's it's like thick and shit, and it got homeboy autographed at the bottom. It's 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 whatever a lithograph is. Uh, you know, I I'm gonna confess my ignorance. I don't Why? really know. I don't really know what the fucking lithograph is. Oh, I don't like that. Oh no, it's just close up, it's like like doing this you. Yeah, that's all. Oh okay. Nah, it's it's definitely like something that's supposed to be framed. It's like like from like a real camera and all that type shit. Some other shit. But then, you know, speaking of uh, my favorite song, and this yeah. is definitely without a, a doubt, High Life. And, mm -hmm. you know, this would be the one to end it with because, like, I, I don't think country rap tunes get no better than this. Yeah, I mean, I love High this whole Life. album, but I really love High Life. High Life? Yeah. Hey, man, that song right there had quite a few uh, versions of it before it became what it was. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Are they are they uh, floating around out there? I'm not gonna tell you that. 
<laughs> man, hopefully one day they see the light of day. Hey, man. I'm the archive. Word. Word. So, shit, before we get out of here, am I leaving any money on the table? Is there anything I ain't touched on or any good story? Oh, you know, one thing I did want to ask you. Um, you know, one of my favorite pimp stories, well, the Soldier Boy interaction was one of my favorite ones you can watch. But uh, I, I remember Bun B said that he was somewhere with Pimp when, when Pimp got home and he heard Oh Boy by Dipset for the first time. And he, and he hadn't heard it because apparently, I guess they ain't have access to music like that where he was locked up at. And, uh, and he was like, damn, this shit jamming is a motherfucker. And do you remember any other songs that, that he really liked when he came home? Chad? Yeah. Uh, Cam, the, the uh, the, the uh, soul singing cat, young cat Cam. He loved Cam. You know his favorite rapper was, right? What? Gangsta Nip. Nip, yeah, well, yeah. Nip, Nip. Yeah. He loved Nip. Yeah. Young <laughs> Nip and Willie D. And yeah. Willie D. Oh, I, I love some Willie D too. Man, of course, man. How can you not love with it, D? The truth yeah. is the truth. Word. <laughs> Word. Man, yeah. that, that, that's, a, that's another thing. When y'all go check out Black Monks on Spotify, check out Big Smoke and Mitch on wherever you get your music at, go look up some of them Willie D solo albums. Like, if nothing else, I guarantee they'll have you laughing. Oh, man. You will be thoroughly entertained. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he a member of Remember that song he had with Pimp C and Lil Wayne? I forgot what it was called. It was on one of them jumps. Oh. It was on that Love by Few, Hated by Many album. Them boys. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, oh, yeah, you got that shit go harder than a motherfucker. Man. Like, like for real. That that shit go hard. I'm about to check it out. Yeah, nah, for real though. Do do yourself a favor, brother. I mean, they've done so much shit, man. You know. There are some things that's never going to see the light of day that they've done. I know. It's that a shame. Chan Bun and Ch man, come on, man. It's, it's so much shit. But what I'm getting ready to drop in a couple of months, what I told you about earlier, okay, you, you'll see. Yeah, nah, we, 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 we definitely going to look forward to that. Well, shit. Big Smoke and Mitch, DA of the Black Monks. I appreciate you joining me going down the memory lane in Houston. Um, anything y'all want to say before we leave? I'm good, man. I'm uh, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm <laughs> but we 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 all memoried out. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity, man, of, of talking to us. You know, because between this cat and I. We have a plethora of memories and of the things that we've done as far as our careers is concerned. And we all coincide with each other, you know. Bun is is one of the most intelligent cats I've ever known. And that's not just talking about what he has done as far as UGK is concerned. Right. I'm talking Teaching about college the, classes, all that good stuff. I'm talking about the shit he did before and right what he doing right now. So the, the cat is 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 on his shit. You know what I'm saying? And anybody hating on that got something wrong with him. And he it's just no got doubt. the rock the bell shit. You know he got he, he got a show fist to come out on rock the bells, man, about nothing but southern shit. Shit, that's what's up. Shit, I'm always glad to see Bun doing good. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, shit, you talk about genius. Uh, that free Pimp C movement was some genius shit. Well, that's that's who he is. We just, you know, we just told you he was a very intelligent cat. Yes, and sir. And he still is. Go ahead, okay. Dan. And I'm, and I'm, this is the last thing I got to say. I am so glad that millennials... And I don't hate on the millennials. I, I support, you know, you, you know, do what you want to do. do. Do your thing. But I'm I'm so glad that more millennials are going back to, 
you know, going back to the classic shit, the real shit, the shit with substance, the shit that really made you feel good, the shit that really spoke to you, you know, real honest to God lyricists, real honest to God music that didn't all sound the same, real honest to God concepts, like for real shit. I've met so many millennials that's like, you know, they, they, they hear some old, some old UGK or some of our shit or some street military mm-hmm. or some, you know, just whatever. And they, and they think it's a brand new artist because they sound Burn. young. No, no, this is 20, 20 mm-hmm. something years old, little G. No, you know, when I, I, I put, I school them and whatnot. And they're like, man, where can I get it? Man, this sounds so much better. You know, a lot of these millennials are getting tired of that. I went to the store and they got me a store and now they come again. <laughs> <laughs> you get tired of that bullshit, you know. And I mean, and I'm gonna say it right here: so a lot of it is bullshit. But it's a lot of millennials that are true, honest to God MCs. And That's I'm talking true. about from 15 on up. Some That's of these true. boys, some of these boys that sound like buns, sound like MCs, you know. And and the females, you know, that they, they really got some lyrics to them. It's but the chicks I'm, that But unfortunately, the industry only wants to push dumb shit. So my message Word. is to all the millennials out there that really got some true lyrics about them, stay the course, do what you do. Even in my in my in my millennial music producers, not the beat makers, the music producers, stay true to what you do. Y'all all get together with the true MCs and you know the real people and make a new movement. It don't have to be this bullshit that they pushing down your throat. We need we need real motherfucking artists, musicians, and entertainers to come back and claim the shit. Don't let the fucking industry tell you what the fuck you supposed to do, what you need to do. Oh, let them oh, pressure oh. you and all that. No, you do what the fuck you want to do if it's if it has substance. Let all these other motherfuckers, you know, I, I ain't gonna say too much because I can get real raw and dirty on this shit, and then I then I'll be banned and <laughs> called something. But yeah, that's all I'm saying. You know, I, I, I'm really, I'm really loving the transition of millennials coming back to really, really looking for the real shit all over again. And when they find out it's us, like, damn, y'all sound better than this new stuff. Uh, yeah, because it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got to say. Real man. Oh, Hello? Yeah, man. Oh, shit, I done broke the fucking one. <laughs> yeah, that was a perfect place to end. Oh, Damn. Frozen my hand. Maybe he'll come back. The Superfast Network, home of Jeff Pop, SDE, and the Superfast Show, now available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from. 
Come check out St. Labs, G from the shop, the Mark Walter Award.